Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Moses Wetangula set a very delicate trap, and I think no one was seeing it. But from where I'm seated, this was a well choreographed trap to ensure that our opposition members of parliament are reduced in parliament in the wake of the finance bill that is now being debated. The second day of the National Assembly session was the day the parliament had organized, already had a plan to debate the finance bill that was already tabled, tabled in parliament by Kiharu, member of parliament, who is the chairman of the budget committee, Ndindi Nyoro. But somewhere, a very contentious matter was sneaked when Moses Wetangula squashed an Azimila Omoja decision to replace Sabina Chege as the minority chief whip with uh, uh, Mwenje, who is the Embakasi West member of parliament. And what was actually expected happened. If you ask me, I'll tell you without milking, uh, without blinking my eyes, that the majority side or the ruling coalition wanted to ensure <clears throat> that um, uh, minority MPs are reduced in the assembly. <clears throat> in the verdict, when Azimio, uh, in the verdict that was uh, given by Wetangula, he declined to. Um, um, accept the decision by the Azimio La Umoja team to replace Sabina Chege and said that Sabina Chege had already had a case that was launched I think in High Court and he wanted the Supreme Court he wanted the Azimio side to pay attention to follow up on the other end so that the decision can only be ratified after that High Court case and it is at that moment that things came out of hand. And Sabine Chege, Mili Odeambo, um, Nyanzi, I think uh, is a member of Women Rep, Kilif Women Rep, Rosa Buyu, and also I think another MP from Machakos engaged in vicious shouting matches, uh, shouting at each other and hurling insults in the floor of the house. And they told really the situation got out of hand and after that while speaker was staring the house was adjourned for 15 minutes then Moses Swatangola retreated to the speaker's chamber and when the house resumed seven members of parliament six from the minority side were ejected from the national assembly including Sabina Chege herself and we're still following up because we understand that that squabble even went uh, continued outside the parliament premises because they were still having insults at each other. In the wake of that, which happened, but that was something that, according to me, it was a trap that was set, and Sabina Chege was clearly used to make sure, Sabine Chege and Moses Watangula, to make sure that a script is well written and acted to reduce the members of parliament uh, on the Azimio side. Take that to bank and go alone. They have been reduced. And as we talk now, the bill is currently being debated. And I think after the debate, it will be subjected to some voting and in terms of that voting, that is where the contention is. Because according to multiple reports, is that still majority side members of parliament, the attendance is still worrying, and quite a number are still boycotting the assembly sessions in terms of the budget, because what was actually expected is a booming number so that they can overwhelm the minority side. And from what I see, 
the government side is not leaving any chances because they know very well that they are members of the majority side because according to the regulation is they might actually resort for secret voting because that is what is in the standing orders and opting for secret voting would also happen because who lose if as new MPs vote for the B match but it will be a very big loss on government side if his members of parliament opt to vote against the bill. But knowing that there is going to be a voting on that bill and is not yet sure on the conduct on how the outcome will play, there was clearly a strategy to ensure that majority side and peace are reduced. And someone might have to pick a calculator and find out that six is a very seven members is a very significant number if they're out of the house even sabine chege is on a minority side on paper uh, because jubilee side was still part of a similar moja so what has happened according to me is already a plan because the ruling was sneaked in the middle of finance bill debate with an ambition to create agitation within the floor of the house to disorganize the opposition camp ahead of that voting and also flare emotions. And if you have to know that it was already something that was scripted, I understand that apart from Sabine Chege, the other members of parliament on the majority side kept off that mayhem and they were just staring and in fact just trying to control the only person there are only some two MPs that engaged with the minority side and that was only Sabine Chege that engaged with the minority side the other members of parliament from the UDA and the Jubilee that why the house did not come in because it was already a plan to eject them and um, I don't think it's something you know that's what i was i was speaking to uh, some gentlemen around and the issue of reducing attendance of reducing the members of parliament is not a decision is not a strategy that for me it's it's not that much effective because the majority side they already have the route has already bought already has a boat majority yes here's a majority that he has bought so there was no need of even reducing those who are supposed to be uh, in parliament. Grossly disorderly conduct. The following members are guilty of grossly misorderly conduct. Number one, no. Mili Odiambo. Number two, Rosa Buyu. Number three, Sabina Chege. Number four, number four, Fatuma Muyanzi. Number five, Catherine Omanyo. Number six, Joyce Kamene. And lastly, TJ Kajuang. Those members, those members, honorable members, standing order 107, 3, reads as follows. The speaker. Now, so that was the ruling when the members of parliament, the seven members, were actually ejected from the chamber it points out something clearly that there was a plot to create that political agitation and it has played out well because i followed the session and i realized that before the house was adjourned for the 15 minutes speaker Watangola called um Opie Wandai, and I think he was, he called Wandai, I think, to address Wandai, but he sent one of the sergeants to go and call Wandai, and Wandai refused to go. So, and I think he was, he, he declined in disapproval of, 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 of the speaker's decision. 
Then another sergeant was sent, uh, was actually called to order the MPs because they were told, they were asked to leave the chambers, but they declined. So they were chanting the Bando Mapambano songs. And that is why it was at that moment then the house adjourned. And so, um, why did William Ruto want majority minority side MPs to be less at the voting? Because as you listen, uh, some of them, is it Pri, Sabina, Rosabuyu, Amili, uh, uh, TJ? Um, yes, yes, TJ, I think. All of them are suspended for two weeks. That means they will not be part, they will not vote on the finance bill uh, when it is going to be done because it's supposed to be done less than one week. So they're not going to be part of it. There is something that is uh, happening faster. Um, this bill, uh, before we look at the, the reason why it was, it was actually brought, there was a time delay tactics on debating the bill. So that first it will reduce the timing because that that other bill, uh, that that verdict by Moses uh, Wetangle, actually it came amidst a debate that was going on. And someone I, I was asking a, a, a very good journalist on why exactly did we have to bring that verdict in the middle of that bill that debate was going on? Couldn't it wait? Or why was it not done before even the session? Where did the speaker's communication have to come in the middle of a debate about that bid? It's very suspicious, if you ask me. It's very, very suspicious. And truth be told, Asmio could not win it on the votes in the floor of the House because already there is a vote majority and everything really that the Asmio camp is deeply infiltrated. So someone somewhere wanted to delay, it was a delay tactics, to delay the debate. First it would create some dramas here and there, and then maybe the discussion would get to the night. But two, I think the state is protecting the Jubilee rebel wing so that they can show them that we are standing in solidarity with them in supporting the bill. And I analyzed yesterday about Sabina Chege's um, 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 a speech, guilt speech yesterday at the National Prayer Breakfast. And I told you, she was actually begging the speaker as, as they plan to remove me as the chief web, a bill lenient on my side. And in fact, clearly pointing out that the speaker should come in her defense and defend her. While the real thing here is morally, it is morally wrong that you still want to hold a position like that of um, minority web while well, you're not on the minority side, you are on the majority side. Unless then that is that distinction is not made because you cannot be the majority side but you hold a minority web position. It, I, I don't know how it works because on that, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big quagmire. Maybe, it's, it's maybe constitutional lawyers are the ones that can unravel the riddle. So there's a bit of that state protection now. Reducing the number of majority sides was because of these three reasons. William Ruto is scared of the secret balloting. The secret balloting is a big headache for William Ruto because he is not sure of what exactly will be the outcome if there will be secret voting. The intimidation and the threats and even the bribes might happen, but you never know. The caucusing within UDA can checkmate the executive, can checkmate William Ruto by quite a number shooting down the bill. You know, it is not about the bill passing by a simple majority. But if out of all those members of vote, if you realize that maybe 30 people have voted against the bill, then it's already a communication of what exactly is going on. And the reason he's so scared about that secret, that, that's one, one aspect, is that you never know how it can go. And the turnout with the opposition wing now on it, this is his first budget. The president is looking at it critically that 
this issue of um, this issue of secret voting you never know how about the turnout and that's why he wants to do them how about the turnout in terms of how many people are going to be voting <laughs> on any side you need there is a way you need and i can tell you that um, i think the opposition wing had not just seen the trap early but there was a big thing to make sure this is done the other thing why they were reduced is they want to create an agenda for the Azimio wing and to, uh, to to act as a diversion to the to the to the budget discussion because i can now tell you that what i'm saying in this podcast is the Azimio team is going to come out tomorrow and make it clear that our members were and procedurally ejected from parliament because they wanted the bill to pass and by reducing the number that is going to come even at by the time i'll be publishing this when you look around these corridors that will be the talk and so they want to set a political agitation on the asmio side because they know that there is a lot of diversion the bill is going to pass and i don't think the president is even committed to change on a comma or a full stop in that bill so ladies and gentlemen that's my take uh let's meet in the next uh, podcast